Hey everybody, it's Brandon at the Weekend Cruiser where I go on a weekend cruise just about every weekend and I just finished my very first sailing on the Celebrity Cruise Line, one that I'd been looking forward to for a long time. It was on the Celebrity Infinity, a 12-night sailing here in South America. I am actually still in the hotel room in Santiago, Chile, flying out later this evening um, to head home to Miami, but I wanted to share with you five different things that surprised me about Celebrity Cruise Line. So these were things that didn't match my expectation or my stereotype of what I thought Celebrity was going to be. And I wanted to share them with you all so that you know you come with the right um, stereotypes in mind for what this sailing is truly gonna be like because I had some misconceived notions that Celebrity Cruise Line you know, totally took away from me. So the first thing that I'll mention is when you're going from a you know, weekend cruise where it is party hardy and everybody's living their best life over to a premium or luxury cru cruise line, celebrity being that premium cruise line, um, I was kind of expecting, you know, a more stuffy kind of crowd. I'm used to a different demographic of cruiser. Um, and so I wasn't really sure what to expect and thought that it wouldn't be as friendly of a ship because people would probably just do their own thing. And I could not have been more surprised than as much as I saw strangers talking to strangers on the Celebrity Infinity, it really felt like a strong community ship. It was impossible to eat at a table for two and not talk to the people directly beside you for a long period of time. We got to know many people on the cruise ship, whether it was talking to them at the cafe, talking to them at dinner. I mean, people on this ship just talked to each other. Um, it was kind of the chatty Cathy of cruise ships um, and everybody was just getting to know each other. The second is the dress attire on board Celebrity Cruise Line. Now it being a premium cruise line, I was expecting it to be very formal and more proper for dinner. Again, coming from a weekend cruise, um, I'm used to people wearing whatever it is they really want to, what they're comfortable in, to be able to go to dinner and there is no formal night. There's just a smart casual, I think. Um, but on the celebrity sailing, I was expecting there to be some solid formal nights and there are not any formal nights on Celebrity's Infinity Ship, and it was a 12-night sailing. Instead, we had three different chick evening um, attires. So they wanted you to just dress in chick evening wear, um, whatever that is for you. And I think that definition is probably pretty fluid. So by taking away the term formal, I think people felt a lot more comfortable dressing down for these nights and the other nights on this sailing. So when we went to dinner, I mean, it would be gentlemen in jeans, there was t-shirts, there were some polos. Um, if they were still, I'd say, well-dressed, I mean, nobody looked like they were sloppy coming into the dining room, but it was not a formal crowd. Like I was really expecting a premium cruise line to have a lot more people in tuxedos and evening attires. The only true exception to this was probably on the New Year's Eve sailing, where there was a lot of people that were really hard for New Year's Eve, but that's a special sail date, and I would not see that happening on other cruise dates outside of New Year's Eve. And this one was a big one for me. You've often heard about me talking about not being um, the demographic that the cruise line put together when they were sourcing uh, their headliners, their talent, the music. Um, on Celebrity, I was thinking it was gonna be a different demographic. It might be a little bit older. And so the music would probably be more reminiscent of older ages as well. And I will say that I was pleasantly surprised again that the music was actually a really good mix. And so I don't mind hearing older music. I, I think that that's absolutely fine and recognize that I'm not the only one listening to this music on the ship. But that wasn't all that was there. And in my mind, I kind of felt like that was going to be majority of what they played. However, I can say successfully that their music covered all of the generations and was actually better music than what I was accustomed to on Royal Caribbean from what I like. So they had one Singers and Dancers productions called Broken Strings, which was fantastic. A lot of really recent songs and music. The cast, by the way, Singers and Dancers did a tremendous job, but it was all music that I really liked. They had some other shows where it was more geared towards a more senior audience, but that show was fantastic. One of the habits we also got on, got into on this sailing was going to the cafe after we had dinner. This was something a lot of people actually did. We'd go eat and then we'd go hang out at the cafe, whether it's breakfast, lunch, dinner. We were always in the cafe. And after dinner, they actually had a DJ playing in their grand foyer. And it felt like a club almost. Like the music he was playing was really, really good. And I was even starting to, to dance a little bit. That's the most that I will ever do. Um, but I even started dancing some while having my cappuccino um, in the afternoon or in the evenings after dinner because I just 
really enjoyed the upbeat music that they were playing, but recognized that that was not my expectation. I would think the cello or the violin would be playing again, which they have those on as well. Um, but to hear club music coming in the grand foyer in the evening was just really refreshing to me. And then the fourth thing that I'll mention is the floor plan of the Celebrity Infinity ship, you know, really felt familiar to me. So the layout that they used for this felt a lot like one of the Radiance class ships with Royal Caribbean. And I don't know why I hadn't thought this through. I think that it's because I've been on MSC and Virgin recently, um, and their ships are a much different style of design. Um, and I was just assuming Celebrity would also be a much different style of design, but the way that it's laid out and set up, it's really similar to what I was already accustomed to. So I found the navigation um, around the Celebrity Infinity was really easy because the floor plan matches what I am accustomed to over at Royal Caribbean. So again, I don't know why I had it in my mind that it was going to be completely different. I think it's because of my past experiences on other cruise lines. Um, but I was pleasantly surprised to learn that, hey, this is something that I kind of already know where everything is at. Um, they might call them different things or, you know, structured a little bit different. But for the most part, you know, I was able to easily navigate the Celebrity Infinity. And the fifth and final thing that I really enjoyed about going on Celebrity Cruises was all the little things. So make sure that you're switching over into the next video, which is where I talk about Celebrity being a premium cruise line because they had tons of little things that truly added up to make this a really solid experience that I was not expecting all these little neat touches that they were putting on their cruise line to really bring it to life. All right, everybody, this is Brandon, the Weekend Cruiser. Hoping to see you on a weekend cruise soon.